A baseball game is being held in this town. A man bursts onto the field with a shotgun. The happy atmosphere suddenly turns tense. The players were scared and left the field. David, the sheriff, sees the situation and rushes onto the field to tell the man to put down the shotgun. He thought he was just drunk and mad. But the next second, the man had his gun pointed at him. The man tried to pull the trigger just as David was about to pull out his gun to defend himself. The scene scared the hell out of everyone present. David didn't expect the other man to actually shoot, either. The dead man was one of the good guys in town. Little did everyone know, however, that the town was about to be plunged into disaster. The coroner's autopsy revealed that the man had not been drinking or taking any illicit drugs. The man's wife also said he had stopped drinking two and a half years ago. So how could he suddenly drink again? Faced with an angry slap from the victim's wife, David could only take it in silence. That night another terrible thing happened in the town. A man locked his wife and children in the house and spread gasoline outside. He set the house on fire and burned them alive. By the time David arrived, the fire was beyond control. And the man who said it was whistling without a care in the world. What's even more bizarre is the resemblance between the man who set the fire and the man who was shot. The vacant look in his eyes seemed to be controlled by something. At the same time, some villagers hunting in the forest suddenly noticed a parachute hanging from a tree. They pulled up the rope and saw that it was the body of a pilot. David arrived on the scene immediately. Based on the body's decomposition, it was confirmed that it had been dead for over a week. But strangely, there was no wreckage nearby. Could it have fallen into the river? David then took the two men down the river and searched. He found a crashed plane at the bottom of the river a short distance away. Things were getting strange. There was no news or information about such a big accident in the papers. Although he didn't know what secrets were hidden inside the plane. But David was convinced it had something to do with the plane crash. Because the town's drinking water comes from that river, so he guessed there was something wrong with the water supply. Sure enough. After checking the drawings of the water system, they discovered that the man who had been killed in the first place was the one closest to the water source. David felt bad and drove to the mayor's house to tell him to turn off the water supply before there became a serious problem. However, the mayor needed to be more convinced. The town is mainly agricultural. It is the best time of year for irrigation. It's impossible to turn off the water just because you're guessing who will pay for the lost crops. For the safety of the villagers, David had to turn off the water himself. However, when they returned to the police station, they found the man in the cell on the floor. Not only was there blood coming out of his mouth, but the veins in his face were also clearly visible. When they didn't know what to do, the man suddenly turned into a zombie. David had tried to call for help, but not only was the phone not working, there was no internet access to the computer either. He took his phone to the street, only to find that it had no signal either. What's even stranger is that what was once a bustling town has suddenly turned into a city of the dead. Fearing that something had happened to the coroner, David rushed to the morgue. Instead of the coroner, he finds a man lying in a hospital bed with his eyes and mouth are sewn shut. This horrific sight terrified David. He was about to help the man when the forensic suddenly attacked him behind him. But the forensic scientist didn't stop there. He grabbed a chainsaw and tried to kill David. David reacted quickly and swung the chainsaw away with a jerk. Then instantly pulled up the wire and dragged the forensic scientist down. The doctor was killed by his chainsaw. The chainsaw in the forensic scientist's hand was like a navigation device, heading straight for David's legs. In the nick of time, Russell arrives and disconnects the power to save David. A keen David senses that something more terrible must be coming, but as the town sheriff, he had to tell his wife to pack her bags and leave. Little did he know that his wife would not abandon her husband, but as they argued about it, she seemed to hear something outside. David went to the warehouse to check but found nothing unusual. Suddenly, his wife's cries for help came. David tried to run back to his wife's aid, but as soon as he left the warehouse, he was arrested by a group of heavily armed soldiers. Both he and his wife were then put on a bus. Not only were they both on the bus, but the entire town was arrested. They were all taken to the same place for quarantine, but the people still didn't know what was going on. The soldiers were silent when asked by David. The people were isolated in groups according to their body temperatures. The wife was forcibly separated from David because her temperature was too high. Even though she explained that she might be pregnant, 
the soldiers would not listen, Judy was eventually taken into an isolation room. There were patients with fevers from drinking water. Some of them had even started to mutate. At that moment the alarm suddenly sounded. It turns out that the infected people outside are having a head-on confrontation with the soldiers. The scene was thrown into chaos. The quarantined people took advantage of the situation and broke through the guardrail. With many infected people inside, the military saw that the situation was out of control. The military had no choice but to leave them behind and evacuate in a helicopter. Meanwhile, David and Russell have taken advantage of the chaos to return to the police station. They grab their weapons and head back to the quarantine area to rescue Judy. Judy is still strapped to her hospital bed. She suddenly realizes that her colleague is also tied up. However, in the interval between the two of them comforting each other, they suddenly notice a movement at the door. An infected man with a nail rake appears in front of them. The two didn't dare to make a sound at this sight. The patients tied to the bed were like lambs to the slaughter, dying under his rake. Judy's colleague, Becca, was the next victim. Judy saves her with a roar, but this also puts the infected man on her trail. He slowly approaches Judy, dragging the rake with him. Just as he is about to kill Judy, David arrives just in time to kill him. The two are rescued. They escaped from the isolation room and prepared to find a car to leave town. But the streets were so devastated that there were no cars available. They have no choice but to walk. They then went to the nearest farm in search of a car. Seeing the intrusion of strangers, the farmer immediately turned his gun on them. He made sure they were all right before dropping his gun. At that moment, David suddenly heard something. The men quickly ducked into the barn. They saw several soldiers preparing to take away the farmer's family. Seeing this, the farmer, desperate to save his family, rushed out without thinking, but on the way, he was shot by the soldiers as if he was infected. Then his family was shot dead on the spot. The military has started an indiscriminate cleanup to bring the virus under control. Now they not only had to fight the infected, but they also had to prevent the military from finding them. However, just as the men were about to leave the area, they spotted a soldier coming this way. David quickly hid behind the door. The moment the soldier steps into the warehouse, he's under control. But after some questioning, the soldier didn't know exactly what had happened. All he knew was that the town was infected with an unknown virus. His superiors had sent them to seal off the town and clear it of the mutated infected. After telling him everything, the soldier begged David to let him go and promised not to expose them. Seeing another soldier approaching, David had no choice but to trust him. The soldier kept his word and lured the other soldier away. At dawn, the men continued on their way. They arrived at David's house ready to take some useful supplies and get out of there in their car. But as Judy looks at the gifts for the children, she is unaware that there is an infected person behind her. David saw that his wife was late in coming down, so he went upstairs to check on her. But when he pushed open the door, he found Judy tied up. Before David could react, another infected person suddenly grabbed him by the neck from behind. He tried to retrieve a dropped pistol but was stabbed in the back of the hand. The man who attacked David was the wife and son of the man killed at the beginning. Even though they have been mutated, they still want to avenge the man. Watched as the other man aimed his gun at David's wife. David was furious. He breaks free and takes out the woman. But no sooner had the woman fallen than the man turned his gun on David again. Suddenly a shot rings out, and Russell outside shoots him through the window. They were about to drive out of town when they saw the military helicopter again. David saw this and drove into the car wash with his foot on the gas. Luckily, the helicopter didn't follow them, but as soon as they breathed a sigh of relief, they fell into a car wash trap set by the infected. By the time David tried to drive away, it was too late. As the car eases into the car wash, the infected attacked from all sides. After a fight to the death, the car is finally driven out of the car wash. But the crisis didn't end there. From the roof of the car, the infected suddenly appeared and wrapped wires around Becca's neck. As Becca was pulled out of the car, several people stopped to rescue her. They were able to get her down in time. But Becca was already dead. The three of them were distraught when they received another missile from the military. They were lucky to escape. But the car was also destroyed. The three of them have no choice but to walk. Suddenly, a police car is coming towards them. David tried to threaten the car with a gun, but Russell threw the barricade. The out-of-control police car overturned, but the driver inside was unharmed. David rushed to question him. What's going on in the town? 
The driver didn't hold back and told them the truth. It turns out that the plane was carrying a biological weapon, it was supposed to be sent to another military base but accidentally crashed into this town. The virus can cause people to lose their minds and can be spread through water. Once infected, it will mutate within two days. David was about to ask more questions when Russell suddenly shot him dead. David was outraged by this unusual behavior, it was clear that Russell was probably infected, to prevent him from losing control. David had to confiscate his weapon, the group then proceeded to the town's exit, but when they reached the highway intersection, they found it blocked off. Russell, who was about to mutate, stepped forward to cover their escape. He told David that he was going to die anyway, so he might as well go out and attract the attention of the soldiers and let you escape. David saw Russell's determination and gave him his gun. After saying goodbye to the two men, Russell walked over to them with determination. The result must have been death by the military, but it also attracted the soldiers' attention and gave David a chance to escape. They followed the highway and then came to a service area. Little did they know that it had fallen too. Looking at the bullet casings all over the floor and the bodies on the truck, they realized that the so-called quarantine was a concentrated and inhumane purge. They had to find a way out of here as soon as possible. While searching for supplies, David found a walkie-talkie that the military had left behind. A message came through. Attention all, we have eight minutes until the countdown begins. He didn't know what it meant, but it certainly wasn't good. The two men quickly found a truck and prepared to drive away from the area. Thinking about what he had just heard, David didn't dare delay for a moment. At this moment, the walkie-talkie said there were less than 30 seconds left in the countdown. They didn't know what would happen at the end of the countdown and had to get as far away from the town as possible. Little did they know that the military would drop a nuclear bomb on the town to erase everything. The truck was instantly overturned by the wave of air that swept through it. But luckily, both miraculously survived. When they look in the direction of the town again, they see a huge mushroom cloud. At the film's end, the two men head for the next town. Unbeknownst to them, their movements are visible to the military satellites. Remember to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.